Okay, my name's uh, Adam Dewar. I'm the screenwriter and co-creator of Shield 5. And I'm going to talk to you a bit about that and how we made it and what it is and if there's anything that can be <coughs> learned at all. So uh, Shield 5 was an online web series uh, published exclusively on Instagram. Uh, the story roughly was um, a security driver called John Swift is framed for a diamond heist he didn't commit and he's forced to go on the run uh, and prove his innocence. So it's a kind of uh, a classic narrative, classic fugitive narrative. But in this case, we um, told it uh, using a hybrid of mediums, uh, TV, short film, um, document dumps, and social media posts. So, I mean, it was very specifically designed solely for the Instagram platform, which at the time, uh, when we released it February 2015, used 15-second uh, looping videos. So we released it one episode um, per day throughout February, so 28 days uh, at 5 o'clock every night. And I think it's worth pointing out now that Instagram had no part in this whatsoever. It was uh, no financial or creative input from them whatsoever. It was an entirely independent production made in the UK for about £15,000, which is not very much. Now, um, the question is, why would anybody want to do this at all, really? I think the genesis came really from a frustration at the long and laborious um, feature film development program. Uh, and it's also an acknowledgement of the way that we are consuming stories now. Uh, we wanted to get something out quickly. We wanted to kind of make something and release it into the wild and let it find the, uh, its feet for itself rather than having that long tiered distribution process. Uh, so both myself and uh, Anthony Wilcox, uh, who's the director and other co-creator, um, we'd been through that painful kind of process and we wanted to do something experimental. And something that could be, you, that could be you know, for the screens that we watch when we're commuting or waiting in a bar or you know, just queuing for the bus or whatever you do, or the BART, I guess, out here. Um, we chose Instagram. Anthony uh, was a big fan of Instagram, so of all the social platforms, that's the one that he liked to use the most. And we also felt that it was missing content um, like this, really. Uh, and also the challenge, of course, of 15 seconds was very exciting. But I think really um, the key underpinning kind of motivation was it's a mysterious nod to the fact that more and more of the big productions that we are used to consuming, we're actually watching them on laptops and iPads and phones. So at the end of the day, we wanted to make the biggest film that we possibly could for the smallest screen that's available. So of course, that is not so easy. And this is roughly the kind of response we got from people when we initially started pitching the idea, which was, you know, how are you going to do that? Um, and to be fair, the 15 seconds was very difficult to crack initially. Uh, we knew that we wanted to make this kind of man on the run thriller, but we felt just going out and shooting, you know, a very short film, the standard 10 minute length film, and then just cutting it up into these 15 second um, kind of episodes was going to be quite a dull experience. And, and so, so we didn't want to do that. And yet kind of crafting individual episodes um, in the way that episodic television does is nigh on impossible with the, with the running time. I mean, they've got, two or three arcs per episode, and you're looking at 10 to 20 hours worth of, uh, of story in a, in a season. So if we wanted to do the same thing, have that feel of a TV series, and with our time limit, we'd only have seven minutes in total. So it seemed, uh, it seemed very difficult to do that. So we went back uh, to kind of break the deadlock, and we thought about how we could marry the big and the small. So we looked at um, trailers, um, for feature films that um, had hooked us in the past. The Star Wars was a big, a big reference for Anthony in the way that that kind of teased the audience and got people excited. And I looked at commercials uh, that kind of went beyond the kind of hard sell, uh, being more than a, just a mood reel with music. Uh, this Guardian um, advert here from the 80s is shot in three different points of view, a bit like uh, Rashomon 
uh, and that is a, an incredible kind of uh, example of um, how to tell a story in 30 seconds. So, um, yeah, these, so, I mean, the problem with these, though, is that we still didn't really tell a story. They, they, they would often present ideas or themes or the promise of a story, but we wanted to tell an actual, concrete, um, complex story with twists and turns. So we decided not to get um, too obsessed by the time limit and just to go for what felt like a full-length feature treatment. So we, so we approached it as we would do a two-hour movie, and we, we wrote that document, that version of the story first. And then it was my job to, to cut that down, uh, which was absolute carnage, essentially. Uh, that, that, that meant identifying the, just the very key beats that structurally moved the story forward. Um, so it could be the heist, the arrest, the funeral. Um, but once you do that, you get a document that's incredibly schizophrenic. There's just no room for, for character definition. There's no room for for kind of the just basic elements of uh, like the characters' names or, or you know stuff that you take for granted when you've got time. So we were at a bit of an impasse uh, as to how to do it until we looked at Instagram and realized that it had the ability to hold stills and videos uh, alongside each other. Uh, and when we thought about that, I realized that you could get a huge amount of information, backstory, connective tissue, by posting documents, maps, or images in between the videos. So if you look at um, these kind of things that have happened in the most recently, you've got Serial, um, the Serial website. It, um, it had documents uh, and maps which supported that online. Um, and if we also looked at the intertitles in silent movies, uh, this one here is from Battleship Potemkin, and that is just one word that um, is punctuated in, in, in the imagery there, which and it, it creates a huge amount of tension just by doing that. And up the top there, for me, a big reference was All the President's Men, which is uh, uh, one of my favorite films. And it uses text in a very, very interesting way throughout with inserts such as this legal pad here to kind of, to help the audience along. And, and you know, it's a very complex story. Um, and so that, to me, was very interesting. That's Robert Redford's hand there, his little pen. So when we looked at that, then the result was something that might allow us to deliver that larger story we wanted. Uh, and it could then become an interactive experience. And it would sit very naturally in the Instagram platform. So great, we had the way, but we still needed the script. And again, absolute brutality. Uh, this is, this, this is a sample page up here. You see, uh, there's not, a lot of, not much going on, really. But uh, this is the rules that we came up with uh, to kind of to help us. It's about a quarter side of A4, which uh, usually an A4 page represents one minute of screen time. So a quarter would be 25 seconds, and we could kind of cut that down. We had to stay to one or two uh, locations, minimal dialogue. Um, Again, that, that key beat that we'd been working on in the previous documents. And then at the time of writing, we timed everything with stopwatches um, to make sure that when we got to production, when we were on set, that we were already set, we knew which each episode was going to be the time it should be. And at the bottom, you can see that in the bold, this is the little bold bit, that is the stills post, which uh, accompanied the, in the, the, each episode. And so that was the most mutable, and that would, uh, that would change right up in till the end to kind of get us out of, uh, get us out of trouble. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, all that said, I guess uh, we should have a look and see how that came together. Um, I'll show, I'll pay, play you the first five episodes, um, but with one caveat, which is that it's not really meant to be seen on the big screen like this. It's meant for your phone. This is how it looks when you see it, and so you can kind of jump between the two and kind of, you know, it's more like a puzzle when you, when you see it on, on an Instagram stream, so it's best that way. But we'll do, we'll do the first episode, which is here. This was released on day one of February. This was the 
steel that came alongside it. I've got the... This is episode two, which was released the next day. Do you think anyone's going to know? I'll find out in half an hour. And also, it's worth noting that these would loop as well. So when you watch it on Instagram, it loops. And so if things move too fast, then you could kind of replay immediately. That's the still that went alongside it with that one, which is just basically that's how we got the information across about who they were, because otherwise you have absolutely no idea. This is episode three. You're insured five. Thanks. Thought we were in nine. I changed it to five. Is that a problem? <laughs> and again, so we can introduce that character and see who he is. Episode hey man, four. hope you got your dentures in all right. I'm at work, but I don't really want to be here. Maybe I can come home at like five or six and show you with your new Come iPhone. on, one coffee, my shout. It'll give us another fine. That was fun, that bit. A lot of people broke their mobile phone screens <laughs> on that one. Uh, and we released that alongside it, which is a delivery order, just kind of seething intrigue in there. Episode five. Exciting. Uh, and this is the, the last still, just to kind of clarify what's going on, using breaking news alongside it. So the press reaction was very good. We had uh, far more, we, went far, we had far more than we thought we were going to get, uh, and it went a lot further. We were trying to hope to have a UK-based interest, but it went to North America, South America, most of Europe. Um, so that was, that was excellent. Um, and the public kind of reaction was good to it too. We had a lot of positive comments um, on Instagram. We peaked at about 34,000 followers, which is not huge if you consider what a celebrity uh, might get on Instagram. But for us, that made us the most uh, followed show on that platform. Um, so that was good. Uh, but I think what, what um, interested us a lot more than the numbers of followers was the way in which the audience reacted um, and interacted with the, with the story. So what happened was these are kind of comments that we pulled out um, which showed how the audience began speculating and creating their own ideas around uh, the show. So they would kind of create their own red herrings, uh, drive each other down the wrong, wrong alleyways, and they would also help to clarify. We've got these guys talking about what, who that guy in the mask is at the end. And so I, I thought that was, that, was, that was very pleasing to us uh, in general. Um, and they also, the audience helped us solve something which we hadn't really accounted for, which was language barriers. We, like I said, we expected it to be mainly a UK-based show, but we ended up in uh, China and uh, all around the world, and so we hadn't kind of figured on translations uh, because it's such an instant global impact that, uh, uh, you know, we just didn't. And then we couldn't add them in afterwards when people started asking for them because uh, there just wasn't enough room on what's already a very small and crowded screen. So what was great was that we put English translations up and then the audience itself ended up translating for us. So we thought that was a kind of a great way in which you can start molding and uh, developing a story with an audience. It uh, felt quite unique. Um, so I guess conclusions taking away from it. I mean, there is, uh, there's clearly an appetite on the upside for this kind of micro content more than we realized. Uh, I think that 
the social media, um, social cinema is a great way for breaking talent, a great way for them to experiment. Uh, we're already dinosaurs because Instagram is up to its limit to uh, one minute. So there's all, all kinds of things that can happen with that if everyone's up for it. And I love the opportunity to, that you can, you can work with an audience in different ways to kind of shape a, shape a story with them. Uh, on the downside, we kind of felt that being just on Instagram put us in a bit of a walled garden in terms of you had to have Instagram, you had to be followed with it. And so uh, if we did it again, I think we'd look to exist in multiple spaces and move across multiple platforms. I think that would be uh, a better way of doing it. Um, visual, perhaps, is the, well, the more visual, the better, essentially, um, because that helps you get around the language barrier because that will then also help you help you grow. So that's kind of what we can take away from it. And any questions? <laughs> then we're open for it.